The following video will show you how to engineer IEC 6150 with PCM600. To do that, we have a protection scheme which is for demonstration and training purposes only. On this protection scheme, there is an REL650 relay which is in charge of protecting this transmission line and an REC670 relay which will be publishing the circuit breaker position. The circuit breaker position is available on the logical node SCSWI1. The number 1 at the end means the instance number used for publishing the circuit breaker position. This is a function block available on the logic of the REC670 relay or Bay controller relay. The tripping relay signal or tripping signal is contained on the logical node SPTPTRC1 where once again is the instance number used for this purpose. <laughs> on the event of a fault, the tripping signal is going to be published and this information received by the REC670 relay. The REC670 relay is in charge of publishing the circuit breaker position. Therefore, it's going to change from a circuit breaker position close to an open position. To summarize it, these are the logical nodes used to send and receive on this particular S scenario. The SPTPTRC1 is going to be published by the REL650 and received by the Bay Controller Relay or REC670. The second breaker position, SCSWI1, is going to be published by the REC670 and received by the REL650. These are the data sets that are going to be contained on the goose message coming from the REL650 relay. We have a general operation which is the equivalent of having any of the three phase stripping, phase A, phase B, phase C, and the quality of the, lo the logical node. In the case of the second break position, this is going to come from the SCSWI1 pause, estival, and also we have to include the quality. This will be a second goose message. Each relay is going to publish a goose message on the case of the REL650 is going to contain the trip signal and the case of the REC670, the second record position. With the brief explanation of what we are going to do on PCM600, let's start building the 6150 portion of the relay. Open the IEC 6150 engineering tool. Right click on the relay and go to IEC 6150 configuration. By default, the IEC 6150 configuration shows you the goose communication if you click here, we have the client-server communication and process bus communication. At the moment, we are going to use only the goose communication and client-server communication. By default, the engineering mode is disabled, so in your case, you might have to enable it by clicking on the tool. The first step is to create the data sets on the REL650, then the goose control block, and the same for the REC670. The REL650 contains some data sets and goose control blocks by default. So what we're going to do here is going to add one data set, right click, new, and type the name of the data set. Click OK. And now double click on the data set and add the information that we need from the REL 650 relay. The SPTPTRC logical node is contained on the LD0 logical device. Click on the LD0 logical device, scroll down, and click on the SPTPTRC1. Once you click on the SPTPTRC1, we look for the operation because that's what we want to publish. We can filter it here by status. Click general, add phase A, add, phase B, add, and so on. 
Do not forget to include the quality. Now we have the general signal, phase A through C, and the quality. Click OK, and now we have created the data set coming from the RDL650 with the data, the data attributes that we want to publish. Next step is to create the Goose Control block. Click in the Goose Controls tab in the bottom, right click, New, choose the data set that is going to be contained on this Goose Control block, TS Demo on this particular case, just type there is no other option, only the Goose. Click OK. And now we have add the data set to the Goose Control block. If you want to make some changes to the property of the Goose Control block, you just need to go to the object properties on the right side of the software. Here on the right side we have the application ID. We usually map the last number of the application ID with the MAC address. Maximum time. The maximum time is the time when there is no an event um, how frequently the Goose message is going to be published. In this particular case, it's 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. We can leave it to, uh, to the default value as 10 seconds or we can change it to every one second. That means when there is not an event, the Goose message is going to be published every one second. Configuration revision number is changed by the software every time that we make a change automatically. You can change it or leave it with the default value. The ID, by default, PCM600 used this long name. For multi-vendor configuration, I recommend to short it. So, as a practice, I prefer to do that. Once you're done with the changes, you can click in Save. And now, the RDL650 is ready to start publishing the Goose message with the trip signal. Next is to create, configure the dataset and Goose control block for the RDC670 relay. We select the RDC670 relay, we click in the dataset, right click, new, and label the dataset. Click OK. Double click on the data set to add the data attributes. The S CSWI1 is contained in the logical device 0. Click and find the SCSWI1. Click in position. Estival. Add it and the quality. Click OK. Now we need to create a Goose Control block. Click in Goose Controls, right click, select the data set, DS demo in this particular case, and click OK. Once again, if you want to change the properties, go to the Object Properties section on the right side. As a, pra as a practice, I match the APP ID with the MAC address number. Change it to one second. Short the ID. And save the changes. Up to here we have configured the Goose messages that are going to be published by the RDL650 in this, in this particular case, the trip signal and the record position coming from the RDC670. As a last step to complete the station bus configuration, we have to do the subscription of the Goose messages between the relays. If you remember, at the beginning I mentioned it, the trip signal published by the RDL650 will be received by the RDC670. Therefore, I have to subscribe the RDC670 to the signal coming from the RDL650. The easiest way is to select the publisher relay and double click on the subscriber. 
Notice that automatically the subscriber subscribe to all the goose messages coming from the Aria 650. I'm gonna uncheck the trip signal and only subscribe to my demo goose control block. Click on the Aria C670 and double click on the goose control block that you want to subscribe the Aria L650 to. Save the, the changes and the relays are ready to publish and subscribe. There are a couple more steps in order to complete the subscription in the case of the ABB relays. If we close the tool, notice like when you right click on the REL650, even though we subscribe the REL650 to the REC670, we need to go to the signal matrix tool, click in goods receive, and map the incoming signal or the data attributes contained on the REC670 inside of the REL650 logic. In this notice like the SCSWI1 position, I'm gonna subscribe it to this function block that has been previously configured to receive the signal and do some work inside of the REL650. Click on the REC670, right click, signal matrix, click in goose receive. Ignore notice that we have the SPTPTRC general A, B, and C signals available on the signal matrix. Map the signals. I configure in such way that I expecting to receive all of them and do something with these signals. Once you do the changes, click save and close the tool, click save and close the tool. Now both ABB relays, the REL650 and REC670 are completely configured to send and receive goose messages on the station bus.